Hello friends, welcome to yet another session of oral medicine and radiology series. So today I will be dealing with how to solve oral medicine and radiology question papers. So uh, before we start, uh, I would also like to remind you that uh, this is uh, not the only questions which would be asked for your exam. This should only help you to finish or you know to finally polish what you have prepared. So you need to basically read the textbook or your notes. This will only help you to uh, in addition to actually uh, frame your answers. Okay. Okay. So let's begin. So for uh, so I'll, I'll start with oral uh, radiology. So for oral radiology I would like to uh, suggest two books either uh, White and Farrow which is considered to be the classic book of choice or the Frani Karjotkar which is also equally good okay so uh, as you can see the initial few questions that is your long essays from uh, properties of x-rays and production of x-rays yes, your long essays short notes and short essays all these three uh, from chapter 3 and chapter 4 here both come under radiation physics okay so uh, so you need to actually frame your answer depending on the weightage of marks so usually what happens here is uh, your question will be split and marks will be given for uh, each section of that particular question so in this case this has not been given so you need to uh, you know think and logically answer the question so I was talking about your long essays so here uh, the long essays basically deal with the properties of x-rays the production of x-rays and the factors that control the x-ray beam and so you can see uh, you know both the questions from both these sub chapters are uh, almost similar so for these uh, first you need to write about the properties of x-rays that is uh, almost uh, similar to uh, the properties of uh, your electromagnetic radiation okay so that is like you know its uh, capacity to ionize matter uh, the interaction with photographic film you know how it travels the speed and all those things you need to mention that is the properties of x-rays and then coming to the production of x-rays so you need to draw a neat labeled diagram of the x-ray tube and explain about the controls and uh, you know the circuits and all those things and then uh, you need to mention about the um, um, radiation types that is uh, your bram sterling radiation and uh, your characteristic radiation which forms the basic uh, you know interaction that actually initiates the production of x-ray okay coming to the factors that control the x-ray beam you need to write about the exposure time the MA that is the milliamperage, the KVP or the tube voltage, uh, the filtration collimation and about the inverse square law. So all these things come under the factors controlling the X-ray beam. So you need to uh, briefly explain you know uh, when you play around with these uh, particular things that is your KVP setting, your MA setting, what happens to the final image, what happens all those things you need to briefly explain depending on the marks. Okay. Coming to uh, short notes that is Compton scattering types of interaction of x-rays with matter. So all these uh, are almost the same that is it is uh, the, the first question that is the Compton scattering is again a part of the type of interaction of x-rays with matter. So basically there are three types that is your Compton scattering, coherent scattering and your photoelectric absorption. So the first question is regarding only just one particular interaction whereas the second chapter the second question is about all the three types of so you need to uh, uh, draw a picture of that particular um, interaction and explain so uh, so uh, in the first case you may draw just the Compton scattering and uh, explain about that uh, you should also mention uh, about uh, you know its contribution to the final image you know whether it actually 
diminishes the quality of the image or whether it actually contributes okay so you need to mention about that and about the percentage so since it's a short note you can actually uh, you know omit uh, the diagram part you can just explain whereas if it's a short essay you can actually uh, write about um, uh, a little more about that and even the picture okay um, then coming to bramster lung radiation uh, that is again uh, you know x-ray production okay so you need to just mention that it's a breaking radiation it forms the basis of uh, x-rays okay all those things you, you need to explain uh, so that was your uh, radiation physics so it's a very important chapter uh, it, it shouldn't be missed at all and if you're thinking then uh, you're doing a big foolishness because uh, almost 90 percent 92 95 percent of all question papers in radiology will have at least one question from this particular chapter and it is the basis of radiology so it shouldn't be missed at all okay so the next important uh, session is radiation biology usually uh, pretty straightforward questions are asked here uh, only few questions will be asked uh, long essays are not much asked but short essays and short notes are asked and it all it usually comes in the same particular area these questions okay so uh, the first question is about deterministic and stochastic effects of radiation which is you know a direct question there's a beautiful table which is given in your textbook uh, differentiating between stochastic and uh, deterministic uh, radiation so you can just read that and write it out and then uh, about the management of radiation induced mucositis so you need to uh, write about uh, you know radiation induced mucositis you know when does it occur that means you know uh, what particular exposure parameter or what particular dose causes mucositis you can you can write about that and then about the management part that is about uh, you know uh, the antifungal therapy and then the uh, the care we can give for that so you can explain about that and then about the radiation caries uh, you can write about the various patterns the three patterns of radiation caries and then uh, you can write why it is caused okay uh, you can tell about the xerostomia part all those things and yeah there's one more thing xerostomia can also be asked from this particular chapter so it can, it can come under this particular chapter or it can come in oral medicine that is under salivary glands or salivary gland disorders okay uh, so you need to write about how to manage radiation caries and, and then uh, you can also read a bit about um, the radiotherapy part okay uh, sometimes a, a question or so may be asked about radiotherapy and and the various uh, uh, you know effects of radiation on oral structures like your oral mucosa your taste bud salivary glands etc you can you can read about that too a little bit so uh, usually uh, only these questions are asked but if a question or two comes you know on that you can easily write because it's very simple okay pretty straightforward and direct Coming to the next section, it is about uh, LADA principle. So earlier, another concept called as a LADA principle was in existence, which means as low as reasonably achievable. So this is a new concept, which means as low as diagnostically achievable. So it simply means that you can actually go in for the simplest of modalities, like your IOPS, if your diagnosis can be made with that, instead of going for high end, uh, you know, uh, modalities like your CT or CBCT so it means that the rest of the question again deals with uh, the radiation protection measures to be adopted by both the radiation personnel or the operator and the patient okay so the next uh, question on, in, in short essays is about quality assurance and infection control in dental 
radiology so for this uh, you can either refer to your white and ferro or your phrenica jodhkar so uh, they have beautifully given this particular uh, chapter as a separate chapter in uh, your white and ferro so you can actually refer to that so it uh, deals with uh, you know how to replenish the solutions how to maintain um, the you know um, how to calibrate the machine uh, how to maintain the operatory in a proper form all those things have been given briefly so depending on the uh, you know weightage you can actually mention about that coming to uh, short notes it deals with again uh, personal protection in dental radiology so if it it means personnel that means uh, if it's for the operator again it comes under the radiation protection part or if it it, it means personnel uh, then uh, it might deal with your uh, thermoluminescent dosimeters or any other pocket dosimeters okay uh, so um, when i read this in according to the spelling i think it it could be uh, the protection for operator so you need to mention about the position distance rule and all the other things like uh, um, you know led screen uh, then all the other setups okay so that comes under personal protection the next one position distance rule also again comes under protection for the operator and uh, the next one to fourth one so thermoluminescent dosimeter or dosimetry this comes under the section called as dosimetry so uh, this uh, this particular section is uh, included in radiation physics or the first chapter of your white and ferro whereas it comes along with protection in your phrenicker jodhkar so uh, along with uh, the explanation of a thermoluminescent dosimeter you can also tell that the other uh, personal uh, monitoring devices uh, include your film badges and uh, pocket dosimeter and all those things okay sometimes questions may be asked about that too but since uh, this is the uh, most recent uh, dosimeter or uh, this is in wide spread usage uh, usually this question uh, only could be asked okay apart from that uh, you can uh, also just give a small reading about the various units of uh, dosimetry like your air karma your ronjen rads etc usually questions won't be asked about that but if a question like dosimetry could be asked then you need to explain about that too and you need to know about the various other pocket dosimeters and Uh, radiation monitoring devices coming to the next session uh, it's about uh, the protection from radiation uh, so for this particular uh, section i would like to recommend uh, you to use frani karjotkar because uh, in your white and ferro dosimetry and radiation protection has been briefly given whereas in Uh, frani kajodkar a little bit more elaborately they have given so this would be a better book of choice for this particular chapter okay so discuss the radiation hazards in dental radiology and its management uh, discuss the methods of radiation safety and protection measures in radiation uh, sorry in dental radiology what is the lada principle Dic- discuss in detail the radiation protection measures to be adopted by both the radiation personnel and the patient these are the long essays asked quality assurance and infection control in dental radiology thermoluminescent dosimetry personal protection in dental radiology position distance rule personal protection in dental radiology okay so the first three uh, questions uh, i would like to recommend your uh, frani karjorkar okay so uh, it's a pretty usually commonly asked questions Uh, which is given here that is uh, the radiation safety protection measures so basically it has been divided into uh, protection for the patient the operator as well as the environment so uh, you know when i have gone through the previous questions 
uh, of different uh, universities uh, i have observed that usually they have asked about the protection for the operator as well as protection for the patient whereas uh, less uh protect I means less questions have been asked about the protection for the environment but in this case you may actually write about all the three so uh, you can uh, you can also include this particular thing that is about uh, the position distance rule uh, a diagram of that when um it is asked about protection for the operator okay so for protection for the patient you can write about uh, you know uh, the judicious use of x ray films you know um, i know to properly uh, think and then only take an x ray okay uh, regarding that particular thing the justification i mean justification okay and then uh, you can also uh, write about the various other things that is used for protection that is the lead screen uh, the lead apron the lead thyroid collar and the gonadal shield etc and then about the pregnant uh, uh, patients who have to be judiciously uh, exposed okay so you can write about that you are coming to the next section on uh, film imaging or uh, film processing uh, so here the questions asked are about uh, ideal radiographs and faulty radiographs so ideal radiograph the definition or the concept of an ideal radiograph should be given uh, with proper explanation about um, you know the contrast the density and the other exposure or other parameters and then the opposite of that that is a faulty radiograph so you need to explain about the various faulty radiographs so uh, it's beautifully given in your white and faro uh, you can also refer to your uh, franny kajolkar for that uh, but you know for uh, faulty radiographs um, the chapter is pretty huge so uh, you might get a little bit confused too uh, so you can just uh, stick on with your uh, white and ferro there's a, there's a beautiful table given with the usual common uh, problems in film exposure and development or uh, you know common causes for faulty radiographs so like your light radiographs dark radiographs you know spots Mm, what happens when fogging happens or overexposure all those uh, reasons have been given uh, so you can actually uh, write down those then uh, the next uh, question that is a long essay is about what is x ray film processing describe the composition and function of the processing solutions and discuss the causes of faulty radiographs so actually uh, these are somewhat uh, two different chapters but interconnected this comes under uh, film processing okay so here uh, you need to uh, mention about uh, the latent image and then what happens when uh, a film is processed and then uh, you need to explain the uh, basic components we can enumerate and write very briefly on the function of each component in both uh, the developer as well as the fixer solution okay uh, and again uh, the sub question in that is about faulty radiographs which i have already discussed the next uh, the next questions are about uh, film accessories okay uh, the first question in yeah the first question in short essays is about composition of x ray film so uh, you need to uh, write a bit about uh, the x ray film so you can draw a small diagram labeling the various components of the x ray film packet and along with that uh, you can write about the basic composition of the x ray film and that is the base the gelatin the surface uh you know all those things okay the silver halide crystals all those you have to briefly write about that when coming to x ray films used in dental radiography you can um, again uh, write about the various sizes uh what films are used for what particular area the pedo films you know basically you can classify the films 
and write briefly about that coming to the next one that is a filters mm, then in short nose intensifying screens grids collimators filters all these are various dental accessories so uh, about filters uh, you can actually um, write about the function of a filter and uh, the amount of filtration which is required according to the kvp you need to write about that then about the intensifying screen you can draw a small diagram of that and the use of that okay it's uh, you, you need to uh, write why it is used and along with what type of film it is used that is it is used with external film so you need to write about that too and then coming to the grid uh, you need to write uh, the types of grids and the function of a grid and uh, you know uh, the modifications um, to the parameters like your exposure time kvp etc <coughs> when you use the grid again uh, collimators uh, also uh, you have to write about that the various types of collimators the one which we use and uh, which is the most best collimator and uh, all those things you need to write coming to filters again i have already discussed about that grids and its uses yeah that too i have discussed okay then uh, yeah regarding processing again the same question is been repeated here what is latent image describe the process of formation of latent image describe the details steps involved in manual processing yeah so here too uh, you need to write about the latent image and what happens to the latent image when it is dipped consecutively in your developer then water then fixer you need to explain about that um <clears throat> yeah and then uh, the various errors only during processing it's asked here so you need to write you know what happens if you put it in a warm solution a cold solution what if you put for a long long time what if you dip initially in the fixer instead of a developer uh, what if it falls inside and then you try to take it out or so what if there is a splash of these solutions all those things you need to uh right in processing errors <clears throat> and the next section uh, deals about uh, automatic film processing so you need to write about what is an automatic film processor what is the difference the basic difference between manual processing and automatic film processing so here uh, you don't actually have the water component instead it is the rollers that do the uh, duty of the second stage that is the rinsing so you need to explain about that maybe a little about the errors caused due to uh, automatic film processing <coughs> yeah coming to yeah the next one is about film processing so here you can write about the manual processing then there is the penny coin test or the penny test which is uh, the test for safe lighting so you need to explain about that okay you need to write what is a safe light uh, why is that used and then the penny test you have to explain about that okay then coming to the developer solution again uh, it has been explained in the composition of the processing solution coming to the next important section that is about intraoral radiographic techniques so the short essays on are, are on object localization techniques and intraoral techniques so if it's uh, intraoral techniques you need to enumerate what are the different types of intraoral techniques basically your uh, uh, iopa that is your periapical radiograph your bite wing and the occlusal okay so that three you have to enumerate and maybe write a brief introduction of each technique so since it's a short essay you can just uh, write about the basic principles behind each thing. Okay. and um, yeah for uh, the iopa or the periapical radiography you can just tell that there it is sub again subdivided into two that is your long cone technique short cone technique that you have to explain okay coming to your uh, object localization techniques so here uh, you have to write what is the need of a localization technique so you have to explain about uh, the the i uh, the radiograph which we use is the two dimensional one 
that is not three dimensional like your ct or cbct hence this is required and then you need to explain about uh, the various techniques which is used that is your buckle object rule your clark's rule or the slope technique hmm? and then uh, you know use of two different uh, radiograph shorter two dif different angles that is maybe an occlusal and a iopa or something like that okay so you need to explain about that and since it is an object uh, since it is a short essay you can actually draw the diagrams and for the interval techniques too you can draw diagram for uh, your um, periapical radiographic techniques so for bitwing you needn't actually draw a diagram but you need to you know tell uh, briefly about uh, why is it used maybe a small in indication for each coming to short note yeah you need to uh, yeah the first question is again bisecting angle technique which is one of the intraoral periapical radiographic techniques okay so uh, you need to write about the principle of bisecting angle technique which is uh, sisinski's rule of isometry so you can actually draw the picture and explain the principle and uh, you know the indications and uh, maybe uh, the disadvantages of the uh, problems or the distortions which are caused due to this particular technique and you can just you know if you want you can write that there is also another technique which is called as the long code technique okay that's it okay so along with that you can also mention about the film holder used with that modality or that particular technique coming to the occlusal radiographs you should tell about uh, uh, the the synonym of or the other name for occlusal radiographs it's also called as a sandwich radiograph sometimes in so instead of uh, occlusal radiographs they can just write sandwich technique so you need to be uh, knowing that particular term okay so uh, you need to write the indications for that and uh, you should also write the types of occlusal radiographs that is I mean basically it's maxillary and mandible but other than that uh, there are three different uh, subtypes of occlusal radiography so uh, since it's short note you needn't uh, draw the picture but if it comes as a short essay you need to uh, draw the pictures and write the angles for each one okay yes um so uh, don't forget to mention the indications for each modality or each technique coming to uh, yeah bite wing radiography again uh, you need to uh, write about the indications uh, then you need to write what is seen in a bite wing radiograph so you need to tell that you know the crown portion and a little bit of the basically the crown portion of the maxillary and the mandibular uh, teeth are seen you also need to uh, write the different types of bite wing radiographs okay uh, and maybe the size of the film so here in occlusal radiography also you have to write the size of the film the angulation used also should be written coming to extraoral radiographs um, usually almost uh, similar repeated questions are asked from this particular chapter uh, the first question which is usually asked is submenda vertex view or the jug handle view so you need to basically write uh, what is the uh, indication for that particular um, uh, modality or technique and then um, you know how the patient should be positioned what is the angulation what are the structures which would be seen or appreciated in that particular view and then what is the modification which is called as a jug handle view Bo basically both are almost similar there's only one small modification sorry one, one small change or a difference between these both views so you need to write that and what is the indication for that special view that also you need to write it's all given in the textbook you need to write it just like that okay and then the next one is transpharyngeal projection or temporomandible of the temporomandible so yeah sometimes question can be asked is uh, so since it's a short note it has just been asked like transpharyngeal projection for temporomandibular joint so sometimes if it is a short uh, essay it can be asked as the various techniques of 
uh, or the various projections for temporomandibular joint and various projections for sinuses so uh, you need to know the various types of projection so this is one among the projections of temporomandibular joint this is a transferential view okay or the mcqueen's view so uh, uh, yeah you need to know the other name for that and basically what is the angle and what or how will you find the structures of the temporomandibular joint in this particular type of projection and what it is good for or what is the basic indication of this particular view okay you need to mention about that so if you can give a small picture of this then it's it's well and good but uh, since it's a short note you may not uh, actually draw a picture it depends on you coming to the paranasal view paranasal sinus view so you have to uh, mention about the pns view or the paranasal sinus view so uh, apart from this you also have to give the various other uh, you have to enumerate the various other uh, projections for the sinus and in this view what all sinuses can be appreciated that also has to be given and what is the basic indication and then uh, the position of the patient and the angulation that is the point of entry of the x-ray has to be given uh, coming to xylography yeah xylography is another uh, important uh, what do you say question uh, which is uh, frequently asked uh, if not the complete question um, sub questions can be asked that is any pathological appearances of uh, you know a particular condition can be asked a xylographic appearance of a particular pathology can be asked so you need to be well versed with xylography this is a very uh, important as well as very easily understood and easily uh, reproducible um what do you say topic okay uh, so uh, basically you need to uh, in, in this particular section since it's a short note uh, much uh, shouldn't be written just you know you can write uh, you know retrograde filling of uh, the salivary gland ducts with a radio opaque contrast medium and okay the various indications all those things can be written and uh, you know what are the normal appearances of uh, the particular glands that is maybe the parotid and the submandibular can be given okay since it's a only a short note or a, a small question okay if it is a bigger question then you need to write about uh, the various pathological appearances uh, and the various modalities and maybe the modifications of that okay Coming to the next section, it is panoramic radiography. Uh, it's a very commonly asked question. Usually, uh, the principle of uh, panoramic radiography and the indications of panoramic radiography has been uh, always asked in various question papers through through the years. I've observed that, and uh, this is one particular session which you cannot omit. It's it's almost similar to your uh, radiation physics chapter. Okay, so here uh, the for the for this question that is the principle of panoramic radiography for this question you need to draw the uh, discs that is the two discs and the fixed center you know there are three pictures uh, you know the rotation all those things yeah so that particular picture or the diagram which has to be labeled and drawn here okay and that is only how you can score marks for this so though uh, you know it can be summed up as a small a uh, small line that is you know reciprocating movements reciprocating uh, movement of the source as well as the film around the fixed center that is the patient Th though though this particular principle can be summed up as this uh, you know the sentence you need to draw this diagram in your answer sheet then only you will be scoring the marks so that is what every invigilator or every uh, examiner wants you to write okay and then uh, these are the various indications so you need to write the various indications of an OPG so maybe you can just add on to the advantages if it's a short essay but in short notes you can just write the indications of an OPG okay 
so since it's a very um, you know, small question you can just write around uh, five indications that's it okay so the next section is on uh, digital radiographs usually uh, the question about sensors are commonly asked from this chapter but since uh, this question is pretty uh, you know indirect or not um, exactly indirect pretty general uh, you can write a lot about this okay so basically you need to uh, tell about what is digital imaging you need to differentiate it from the normal uh, radiographic imaging so you just need to tell that it is how how different it is from the film and what are the basic components or what are the basic uh, you know principles or steps involved here so you need to explain about uh, a bit about what is a pixel and a voxel so uh, so you can just explain that uh, you know in a film imaging uh, it uh, you know the density the contrast all those things are uh, dependent on uh, the various parameters and it is a play of silver halide crystals whereas here in digital radiography it's all about pixels so pixel is the basic uh, component here and then uh, you can write about the various uh, advantages of uh, digital radiography over um, your normal film imaging so since it's a pretty general question you can write about that and since it's a short essay you can write about the various types of sensors too you can enumerate on that okay so if there's a direct question on differentiate between various sensors then you can write about the uh, various uh, very three different types of sensors otherwise you can just write about the various indications the advantages over the normal film and what is the basic difference between normal film and the uh, digital uh, method of doing that is the digital sensor okay okay coming to the next section that is uh, significance of lamina dura and uh, differential diagnosis of uh, periapical radiolucencies uh, the first question that is significance of lamina dura uh, this particular question is actually uh, you know somewhat indirect to the uh, you know second question okay so it it actually means the second question asked in a a different way but this particular question uh, is usually asked for uh, pgs or a pg it's a pg level question actually so here we need to explain the normal appearance of a lamina dura and uh, you know the lamina dura in various pathologies okay so uh, we have to uh, you know write about the significance of lamina dura when the teeth is healthy then you have to write about the conditions when there is thickening of lamina dura or there is thinning of the lamina dura okay so if there is a breach in the lamina dura then what happens and then you can also write about the various pathologies that is the uh, you know apical periodontitis types that is your abscess granuloma and um, your cyst okay that is when and the tooth is under any pathological effect okay you need to write about that too so that's about your lamina dura so you can draw a beautiful picture of uh, the root uh, surrounded by a uh, pdl space and then the lamina dura and that is when it is in a healthy condition and then the next that is when it is broken and then uh, you have the other pathologies appearing the periapical pathologies appearing so you can draw a picture of all those two and then you can explain about those so uh, that answers your short essays coming to the next section that is uh, dental caries uh, okay these questions were also uh, pretty much not asked for uh, undergraduate examinations but uh, recently a trend has come and these have been asked but uh, it's a very beautiful question so the, both these questions are very beautiful pretty straightforward questions from uh, chapters you know uh, dental caries you have uh, a, a proper full fledged chapter uh, in your textbook and even periodontal disease is a full fledged proper chapter in your uh, radiology textbook so you need to just uh, enlist uh, you know the various features of dental caries 
you know uh, you need to write which modality is the best for what type of queries that is for example uh, your interproximal queries uh, the best modality would be your between okay so uh, you you need to stress on that and then uh, you know uh, what are the differential diagnosis or what are the other um, um, what do you say uh, artifacts which could mimic a caries or a caries lesion that uh, you you need to write about that too and you need to differentiate about that then uh, regarding your uh, periodontic or uh, periodontal disease you need to uh, write about um, what all the radiographic uh, assessments uh, are there with regard to periodontal disease like uh, you know um, you need to measure the condition of the alveolar crest the amount of the bone which is present you know the depth of the pocket whether there are any um, focal bone losses any calculus um, regarding any poor contour of the adjacent teeth so all those are the periodontic sorry the periodontal uh, features uh, which could be assessed there are so many other uh, things to which can be considered in assessment of periodontal disease apart from that uh, you need to write about the limitations of uh, you know imaging imaging modalities in the assessment of periodontal disease because always uh, you know you you see that the periodontal disease for any disease pro- process it actually progresses a little more um, a little more than what is actually present in your uh, radiology part or or the radiographic image so you need to always correlate okay so you need to write about the in limitations of the intraoral or the extraoral images too sorry the intraoral images too okay so you have to uh, write about uh, the various types of bone defects or bone losses seen and then uh, the various changes which can be seen and you can also write about uh, maybe uh, you know the significance of digital subtraction radiography or uh, you know consecutive uh, radiographs taken at different periods of time okay so you can write that in um, the other one too that is uh, the assessment of uh, dental caries lesions also you can include that also okay mm, coming to the next question radiographic features of dental caries yeah same role of uh, radiography in diagnosis of periodontal disease yes same thing so you need to write all those things which modality has to be used uh then you can also um, if you want you could also uh, write a bit about the endo perior relationships also okay so uh, you can uh, you can observe this in your uh, your radiology textbook both freni as well as uh, white and ferro has a separate full fledged lessons for both these diseases so you can actually refer to that and make a proper short note for that uh, so the next session deals with uh, differential diagnosis so uh, you know apart from freni and uh, widen ferro i would like to suggest just one more book uh, don't worry uh, it's called as wooden ghost it will be available in your libraries uh, it's a very good book uh, this is the best book for differential diagnosis so see all these questions your long s is dealing with you know differential diagnosis of mixed radiolucin radiopaque lesions as well as multiocular radiolucencies and dds of periopical radiolucencies so all these uh, you know are given properly in your wooden gauze so if you don't have wooden gauze it's it's okay it's fine only thing is that you need to know what all lesions come under this particular category so for that you you need this book so once you can actually list all these entities or you know put down or jot down all these entities then it's easy you can refer to your uh, normal freni or widen ferro and uh, and fill in the rest so for both of these you need to uh, you know refer that particular book and list it and then write so uh, according to the marks weightage you can actually uh, decide you know how how much to write so if it's like uh, for a long essay question you need to enlist or enumerate all those things all those mod- um, uh, lesions and then uh, you need to uh, write a little bit 
more elaborately on each lesion and you know which do you think is uh, uh, which do you think should uh, be given the most priority and then in descending order okay it should be given like that uh, both this okay then coming to your uh, short essay you can actually again uh, enumerate and write the most um, common ones okay uh, you can actually uh, omit the rest of you but you need to enlist all these entities what all it comes under this and then uh, you need to write a, sm a small bit on all the important ones okay uh, for the long essays you can also mention about the rarities or uh, the conditions which can occur but which are very rare but here in your short essay you needn't actually write about the rarities okay uh, the next one the short note short notes is on uh, radiological features of uh, maxillofacial bones in hypoparathyroidism so uh, this uh, you can re refer to either your widen ferro or your freni uh, so you go to the uh, lesson on uh, diseases affecting the bone or the structure of the bone so you'll have a beautiful uh, paragraph on uh, the various diseases which affect the bone so you need to learn about that a bit and you can write about that you can write about uh, the brown's tumor you know the appearance of the lemon and dura the bones all those things you can write it's, it's given properly in your textbooks so um, since it's for um, you know it's a very small question that just it, since it's a short note question you can just write uh, three or four points that's enough coming to uh, ludwig sanjana so this is actually uh, uh, coming under uh, inflammatory lesions so uh, you need to mention what is ludwig sanjana you need to um, tell about uh, the uh, problem or the complication of ludwig sanjana and uh, what is the uh, most disastrous outcome of uh, not treating a Ludwig's angina okay so that means death so you need to tell about uh, that so all these three things you should write in this particular uh, under this particular question okay coming to the um, next section on uh, cysts of the jaws uh, the question is discuss the differential diagnosis of mixed radiolucent radiopaque lesions of the jaw so uh, this is uh, one and the same as uh, before then the next one is what is multiocular radiolucency classify multilocular of all these the wooden gauze is the best book which is to be followed whereas for uh, you know uh, writing descriptions on each entity you can actually refer your friend your white and furrow okay coming to short essay differential diagnosis of uh, periapical deficiencies again uh, you can refer to your uh, wooden gauze you can actually classify it into vital and non vital all those things you can jot down so all these questions short essays um, can be referred in wooden gauze and uh, done uh, you know the descriptions can be read from your uh, white and furrow or freni short notes also similarly you can do uh, whereas uh, here uh, the answers need to be very crisp and short so you can just write two or three points that's enough okay. coming to benign tumors of the jaws uh, so you have a wonderful uh, section on this in your white and ferro so you can refer your white and ferro for that so again uh, the initial part the long essays actually as I told before it has to be uh, taken from your wooden gauze and then uh, description you have to write from your white and furrow or frenny the short essays are also similar to that coming to malignant diseases of the jaw again uh, it's similar beautiful descriptions on uh, malignant disorders of the jaws are given in your white and ferro so you can refer your white and ferro for uh, the description of each entity coming to your uh, short essays multilocular radiolucencies of jaw bones again uh, that you can refer to your wooden gauze and then 
follow it up with white infrared coming to the next question that is short notes adenoid cystic carcinoma uh, well uh, this can be included in the oral medicine part because it is a salivary gland tumor or a salivary gland carcinoma so uh, you can uh, refer your oral medicine textbooks or uh, maybe shafers or uh, nevils for that it's a short note so you just need to write a little bit on that that's all uh, well coming to the next part that is disease of the bone manifested in the jaws you have a beautiful uh, lesson uh, in both your phrenia as well as uh, your wide and pharaoh which gives proper description of these lesions and uh, you know the first two lesions again uh, so sorry the first two questions again deal with uh, using of uh, the book which i had told you earlier that is wooden gauze and the next question classify fibrosis disorders of the jaws well uh, uh, i i prefer the white and pharaoh for this because uh, the descriptions are pretty good so i have actually referred to that uh, for my preparations so uh, you know for this particular question my favorite or my personal advice is uh, follow the white and pharaoh Uh, since it is a long essay you need to enlist all those um, fibrosis lesions and what are the differential um, you know points or any any pathognomic features for each you need to uh, write about that a little bit elaborately okay coming to your short essays again uh, it's uh, similar to what i told you before refer to the wooden gauze and then follow it up with your white and ferro or uh, phrenia coming to the next one <coughs> that is uh, short notes moth eaten appearance well here uh, it actually um, refers to uh, osteomyelitis so uh, this again comes under uh, your uh, inflammatory or infective uh, diseases affecting the jaw or the bone um, so uh, you need to write uh, you need to write which entity uh, causes or presents with this particular appearance and then uh, you need to write a bit on uh, what are the features since it's a short note you can just write uh, three or four points that would be enough coming to uh, the next uh, section that is uh, trauma to teeth and facial structure so well uh, this hasn't much been asked but how uh, there are certain question papers with a uh, bouncer like question well uh, this is again uh, pretty easy or straightforward if asked at all um, so first uh, you need to uh, know what all projections or what all modalities can be used for each type of uh, trauma um, that is for example if i say uh, if uh, a zygomatic arch fracture is suspected uh, you need to know what particular projection is to be taken uh, so and you need to write about that so the questions usually asked would be in that genre okay so you need to know about that so you need to uh, learn about uh, the different projections for your tmj fracture uh, any facial bone fracture maybe leaf foot 1 2 or 3 or maxilla fracture or you know trauma involving the sinus or bit all those things so here again uh, it, the question is radiographic diagnosis of facial trauma so you need you you might need to write about in which all bones are uh, involved in the facial skeleton and according to that you can just write what all projections are there and since it's a short essay you needn't elaborately write about all the projections but you should enlist all the various projections used okay again uh, you can also uh, write a point or two uh, about uh, the limitations of taking two dimensional radiographs in trauma uh, so uh, you can uh, you can add on by telling that for a proper localization you might need to take um, you know two different radiographs at uh, right angles to each other something like that and and then you know for such kind of trauma you can use a cbct or higher end modality okay uh, so that's it for uh, this particular chapter yeah the next section uh, is a section on general questions uh, you know actually uh, this shouldn't be included in the general questions but because oral medicine is pretty vast these pure oral medicine 
questions have been you know pushed back uh, and this has come under the general questions uh, the first question is on importance of medical history well uh, the earlier the previous editions of uh, burkett have given proper uh, pakka definitions uh, as well as descriptions on uh, you know the importance of uh, medical history uh, whereas the later on editions do contain uh, this chapter but however the importance has been uh, diminished so you can also refer to your revikaran ongol uh, they have also properly uh, mentioned about this particular aspect coming to your uh, nsaids or non steroidal anti inflammatory drugs you need to enlist all these drugs or you can actually briefly classify them and then give examples and you can just mention a few uh, examples of uh, uh, drugs uh, nsaids which you commonly use for uh, dental pain okay so this for this you can actually refer to your burkett uh, there's a um, pharmacology chapter uh, or else you can refer to your textbook uh, your pharmacology textbook tripathi or padmaja uday kumar okay coming to the next one uh, diagnostic importance of saliva well uh, this particular uh, question uh, is usually asked for pg exams but however uh, this has come here so uh, I, i you can actually mention about the, uh, the components or the composition of saliva uh, you know how much ml is secreted per day so what are the functions of uh, saliva and then uh, you know under disease conditions what all do you expect so you can talk about saliduria you can talk about serostomia you can talk about uh, you know the properties or uh, the, uh, the the salivary condition in um, diabetes and any other systemic um, disorders like your uh, any any kidney or renal disease all these things you can give okay and then uh, in uh, cerebral palsy or parkinsonism okay or uh, you know you can even talk about uh, you know the secretion of various drugs uh, through saliva okay Uh, the importance of uh, saliva for various diagnostic tests all these you can mention so um, i think uh, a little bit more has been given in uh, your oral path textbooks than your oral medicine textbooks however uh, your ongol has given a little bit on that but you can always refer to your uh, shafers as well as neville for uh, more data so since it's an essay you can write all these so basically you have to write about the composition of normal saliva and the components from that uh, comment on the immunoglobulins and um, the uh, lysozyme the salivary amylase etc okay coming to the short notes well the rational of selection of drugs in painful conditions again <laughs> this uh, is a proper pg question and uh, i don't know how you can actually uh, limit this to a short note but well since it has been asked for a short note uh, you can uh, write a point or two from your pharmacology section of burkett okay so you can also give few examples of uh, medications um, used for dental pain and uh, you can just comment on slow pain and fast pain that is a delta for fast pain and c fibers for slow pain and so what uh, you know kind of drugs can be used for each type of pain so you know you can comment on you know the faster onset of action the duration the half half life and all and depending on that you can just uh, comment on that coming to fray syndrome again uh, this is a proper oral medicine topic um it's also called as auricular temporal syndrome so you can talk about the surgery which has caused you know sweating in relation to the uh, parotid region while chewing so uh, this is a proper uh, syndrome just from the oral medicine textbook yeah 
coming to oral manifestations of inflammatory bowel disease again uh, this comes under the session of systemic disorders affecting uh, oral cavity so again uh, there's a beautiful lesson given in burkitt uh, and your own goal so you may refer to both of these for uh, the oral manifestations we also need to know about the various other uh, disorders or diseases which can uh, present oral manifestation especially especially those which causes ulcers and vesicles coming to dental consideration in patients suffering from hypertension again uh, it's under the section the same lesson systemic disorders uh, so again uh, you need to write a point or two since it's a short note coming to role of nsids in oral medicine again i have discussed about that so since it's a short note you can just write a few examples coming to antiviral therapy of sorry in oral medicine uh, so uh, here uh, you can just mention a few entities uh, which are caused due to virus and the most common drugs which are used like maybe acyclovir gancyclovir etc you can also talk about a little bit about uh, you know hiv and uh, the drugs which are used for that okay so since it's a short note you can write only uh, three or four points uh, anything extra wouldn't fetch you marks so logically you can write that so that's it guys